So this is bunkering. Let's fill this ship up with some fuel. Ship bunkering. A big vessel needs gas like a car to move from port to port. And all equipment I've shown in these videos require fuel to power like our propulsion, generators for electricity, or boilers for our steam. But how do we fill up on fuel? Well, ships carry out what is called bunker operations, where we receive fuel from other small ships called bunker barges, or from refinery terminals. However, this isn't a simple operation like when you go to fill gas in your car. We deck and engine teams on board prepare before operations, when we carry out the actions, and we safely wrap up after all is said and done. In this video, we'll carry out a fourth engineer overview of carrying out a bunker operation. First, proper planning is carried out. What are we gonna bunker? Heavy fuel oil? Diesel oil? Lube oil? Even water could be a bunker. Now, how much will we receive? Or will we just top up all our tanks? Which of these tanks will we store the fuel? These are some of the questions we ask. The chief engineer, along with the operations engineer, in this case the fourth engineer, will agree on the tanks that will be filled, calculate the free space inside the tanks, or transfer fuel from one tank to another to avoid mixing of fuels as much as possible. Also, very importantly, the engineers must be familiar with the valve and fuel oil pipes of the ship to carry out correct alignments. As explained in previous videos, knowing how to sound and take ullage is key to knowing the volume of the liquid inside the tank. With the sounding tables, we'll find the volume and we usually fill up the tanks to 90% capacity for safety. So, we calculate the missing volume we need and then we need to calculate the mass of the bunker we need. But, why do we need to find the mass? Well, unlike the volume of a liquid, which can change if we heat it up or cool it, the mass cannot be altered because matter cannot be created nor destroyed due to the law of conservation of mass. So imagine, if we paid for fuel by volume, like we do in a gas station for our car, the bunker could just be heated to take up more volume, and we would receive it, and then cool, and then find out we have less fuel, because we paid for volume, not mass. But if we work with mass, we can avoid this, and ensure we have enough fuel for safe operations. As you can see, temperature is gonna play an important role. Let's remember, density equals mass over volume. By simply isolating the mass by multiplying volume on both sides, we get that mass equals volume times density. We can find the density of the fuel by checking the bunker delivery node, which will give us the density at a standard temperature. And the volume, we will find it by taking sounding or ullage. With this, we can find the approximate mass inside a tank. If you would like a more accurate mass calculation, you can also further correct the result with temperature corrections, like you can see in this formula. So moving on, we found the mass we need. We agree upon the tanks that we will fill and the order. We know the valve position and lines. 
We also should know any safety procedures or emergency procedures in our company's safety management system and implement them as well. We also do any pre-bunker paperwork required by the company. But let's leave that up to Chief for now. So, the day of bunker finally arrives. Basic safety and precautions we always carry out is that all deck scuppers must be plugged to prevent any oil spill on the deck from reaching the sea. Drip trays below the manifold are placed and the containment tray should be clean and clear. Onboard communication as well as with the bunker barge should be established and an emergency stop procedure agreed upon. Opposite side of the manifold should be blinded and the valve closed. SOPEP and firefighting equipment should also be standby on site. SOPEP is Ship Oil Pollution Emergency Plan. It's basically a set of guidelines that Marpol created to prevent oil pollution at sea. In case of bunker operation, a list of equipment should be standby on site, like you can see here. We should also receive a bunker delivery note for our new fuel, with important details such as its specific gravity and temperature, sulfur content and quantity to arrive. This is to ensure the quality of the fuel, MARPOL compliance, as well as the amount we will receive. In some companies, the fourth engineer might even have to go to the barge and sound their tanks, checking their temperature as well, to ensure everything is correct. Once everything is verified and agreed upon, we can commence connecting the bunker hose to our manifold line that we want it to fill. It can be the heavy fuel line, the diesel oil line, or lube oil line. Just be sure to include the sample flange between the manifold and the hose. We'll get more on that later. With the hose secure and everything aligned to our first tank, we can communicate the barge to agree on a low starting pressure and open the manifold. They will start pumping out fuel slowly. Once we see pressure on the gauge, that means fuel is slowly going to our tanks. This is a critical moment where we should sound to ensure that the correct tanks are filling and the rest are stable in their reading. This is very important to ensure that no unwanted tanks are filling and our valves are keeping because if a valve is passing and another tank is receiving fuel this can mess up our calculations and estimates. Once we verify everything is flowing correctly we will ask the barge to increase the pressure and start taking a sample of the incoming fuel, a continuous sample. This sample will be dripping into the container we installed throughout the entire bunker operation. Here, the operating engineer can do a few things. For example, they can fill one tank at a time or open another tank and fill them in parallel, dividing the flow. I usually do this when one tank is almost full, I would open another tank to have them filling in parallel and the one that is almost full once it's topped up close the valve and then focus on the other this however is dependent on the experience the engineer has with sounding and checking the tables as well as communication with the team and while that's going on Continuous checks of the bunker line and hoses are carried out to ensure that there are no leaks. We watch the hose as well as the water for any oil. We keep an eye on the pressure of the manometer for any abnormalities or jumping. 
Abnormal jumping in the bunker hose or in the pressure of the manometer could indicate compressed air being injected in the fuel line. This will cause the fuel to foam inside our tanks. This is commonly referred to as the cappuccino effect. This foam would then create inaccurate sounding readings. These inaccurate soundings would make it seem like we're receiving more fuel than usual. And it's basically cheating the ship of fuel. Temperature is also monitored continuously for any unusual heating because of the previously mentioned increased volume. Finally, as we reach the last tank, it is recommended to ask to lower the pressure so we can slowly and adequately top up the final tank. Remember, safety and prevention of pollution is key. We only fill up to 90%. Any higher, we could risk an overflow. Once the agreed amount is reached, the bunker barge will stop sending fuel and should blow compressed air on the line to clean up any residual fuel and then safely disconnect the hose when our chief engineer approves. Final soundings will be taken at the end to confirm any changes and from our continuous sample container we will divide it in four sealable sample containers to give to our chief engineer. These samples will be classified as such. The ship sample, the barge sample, analysis for laboratories at shore sample, and finally, MARPOL sample, if any port authority would like to see if we're burning compliant fuel. And to conclude this bunker operation, the chief engineer will sign a confirmation receipt of the bunker delivery note, including the amount of fuel received. We will then give this along with our bunker sample to the barge. On the other hand, if there are any issues, the chief can also make a note of protest if there was evidence of cheating to the supplier. Thankfully, this hasn't happened to me yet, but it is important that this option is available. Finally, the watch engineer needs to make note of this operation in our oil record book, which tracks the movement of fuel on board. So, with this video, I hope to have shown a clear view of how bunker is loaded on board at least for the fourth engineer. Think about that the next time you fill gas in your car. Success and nothing else, Seafair. Till next time.